Thank you. Uh, and good evening, councillors, and welcome to this finance and operations committee meeting for the 2nd of June 2021. Um, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land and pay respects to their elders and the elders from other communities who may be here today. We also acknowledge all other peoples who have contributed to the rich diversities of this country. I'll call for apologies. Uh, governance matters. This committee meeting is conducted in accordance with the Local Government Act 2020 and the Vanilla Middle Sea Council of Governance Rules 2020. Uh, in accordance with the Governance Rules 2024, 6.4 meetings of council will be uh, audio recorded and made available for public access. Councillors are reminded of their behaviour at the council meeting and disclosures of conflict of interest in accordance with the Local Government Act 2020, a councillor must declare any conflict of interest to section 130 of the Act on any items in this agenda. Are there any councillors wishing to declare a conflict of interest? No. And I'll just remind councillors that masks are to be worn um, through the meeting but can be removed if they wish to step. Um, item business, point one, question times and public submissions on any matter. And we move to item two, proposed 2021-2022 budget submissions. So we'll now move uh, into, we have four speakers uh, who have put forward submissions in relation to this matter. And the first one is David Law. Okay, can you see me? Can you see me? Yes. Good evening, David. Can you hear us? Yes, uh, I can hear you now. Thank you. Um, David, just uh, before you begin, I'll just give you a heads up that uh, you'll have three minutes um, to speak to the to the submission provided. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I uh, trust I'll be able to get through what I need to say in three minutes. But uh, can I just say at the start, if I do drop out before then, that's not because I don't want to be here. My uh, computer's playing up and my IT guru, the town's IT guru, isn't here until tomorrow to fix it. So uh, with that in mind, uh, I'll get straight into my submission. I no doubt you've read it. I'm just going to focus on uh, two of the key issues that I wanted to uh, highlight tonight. The first po point that I want to make is about the form and comprehensibility of the document. And I understand the need for the uh, structure of the document. It is a dense document, necessarily so. Unfortunately, that means that um, pretty well every person with which I've discussed the document, the budget, uh, has had great difficulty in reading through it. And it's my submission that uh, it would greatly improve the readability and the, therefore the understanding of the community and what Council is doing if a summary page or pages, if necessary, was added to it. So I'm making a very strong recommendation that such a document should be prepared. I have seen other councils do just that. And uh, I think it's uh, to the benefit of the community and obviously the council, if people understand exactly what the budget contains. The second point I'd like to emphasize is that uh, I'm very concerned about uh, some key capital uh, expenditure items and those are of principal concern to me. And uh, every person that I've spoken to, I have to say, is the two line items dealing with the Visitor Information Centre, redevelopment and the art gallery. I don't find uh, anywhere in the current council plan or the community vision, uh, or indeed uh, any current strategy, and I'll be corrected on that point, a reference to either of those two projects. So from my perspective, uh, to include those projects as major items in this current budget is a significant shortcoming of the budget. And uh, my proposal is that in the light of significant community angst, I'm sure I'm not the only person who's made these comments, that the budget should be reviewed. I believe that there are plenty of opportunities for Benalla Council to find alternate projects pardon me, projects whilst reviewing these uh, two proposals. If they stack up and if after community consultation there is support, 
then uh, fine, let's add them to a future budget. But without the community engagement, community knowledge about these projects, what they entail, uh, I believe it's inappropriate. And in fact, it's not good governance for those to be included in the budget. The last point uh, I wanted to draw attention to was a comment uh, I made about, uh, or two comments I made about key performance and expenditure indicators. I think there, there are opportunities to refine the information that you already have available in that budget uh, to make it a little easier to see where Benalla sits at the present time. And I finally make a comment about user costs, um, what should I say, uh, fees for council facilities. You may be able to tell me or reassure me that um, some uh, modelling work has been done to ensure that those fees represent a reasonable balance between cost recovery and actual utilisation of council or community and facilities by the council. The other comment in respect to that that I make is that I notice there's a significant reduction in female staff members in the council. I have found out uh, since the submission the root cause of that. I'm not sure that I've seen anything uh, advised in the community of that. I do understand the role of the CEO and uh, his uh, responsibilities in relation to staffing and structure, but a significant change like that which seems to dwarf the uh, loss of uh, jobs in Target, for example, is something that is worth uh, noting. So Thank with you. those comments in mind, I'll draw my conclusion to a close. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Uh, I'll now open it to councillors to ask questions. You're happy to field questions, David? You there, David? I'm still there, yes. I'm just going to open it to the floor for councillors to ask questions. You're happy to take questions? Uh, yes, where I can. Yep, Councillor O'Brien. Chair, thank you, David. Um, do I need to stand up? Okay, sorry, David, I was standing up for you. Um, thank you for your submission, taking the time. That's, you know, obvious that you've gone through everything. I'm just wondering, um, as the uh, extensions and changes to the gallery um, are not actually being funded by council, but by state government, do you think that this would make a difference to the um, opinion of the people that you know in the community that you're saying are against development at the gallery? I think at the end of the day, it is still a council project in that it's work on a council building in the council's jurisdiction. Uh, the funding source, I think, is a, uh, a secondary issue. And uh, if that's a constraint, I suggest some good negotiations with uh, the um, state government would be in order. Um, I still believe fervently that it needs consultation with the community to ensure everyone understands what's being proposed and understands the priority that's being put on it by council. I see no uh, losses in uh, engaging in appropriate community consultation in accordance with the council's own policy and strategies. And uh, at the end of the day, I think it uh, overcome some of the issues uh, that may have uh, stemmed in the past from perceived lack of communication between council and the community. Thank you. Councillor Dunnerick. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Firstly, uh, thank you, uh, David, for the submission and the detailed submission with the summary and very comprehensive. Um, look into the budget really well. I think you highlighted some areas in the budget we might have to uh, look at again and see whether there are errors or is that the way that's presented. Um, my question is about the Visitor Information Centre and you recommended to uh, suspend that project pending further you know, community consultation and you suggested two shower very projects sealing the Benalla Lake walking track uh, and obtain a consistent standard along this much user friend user as used facility compared to the present circumstances and the written plan. Um, I know you're also a part of the community plan implementation committee, and you mentioned that you spoke to people and they oppose the other developments. Uh, did you have any buying for something like this? Did you have any people agreeing for something like this? Uh, yes, certainly. And uh, I think more broadly, the lake is an absolute icon and uh, a, a gem in Benalla's crown, if you like. Um, I think uh, a boardwalk around the lake or the existing walking path around the lake is a very significantly utilised facility by the community and certainly people that uh, 
I speak to regularly uh, talk about how wonderful it is that we have it. Um, even in COVID and the worst of um, the restrictions last year and this year again, um, it's being utilised by people and they are generally socially distancing and putting on masks. But uh, without fail, the concern that people have is the inconsistency in standard. And it seems to me that that is a project that would significantly enhance the lakeside environs, uh, respond to the needs of people who are out there already enjoying walking, but not much in winter when it gets extremely boggy and slippery, particularly around the tennis courts, but elsewhere as well. Half of it is sealed. It seems to me uh, that uh, we've been uh, dragging the chain for too long and not finishing the job. It's not the only project, nor is the other project, seal, proper finishing and sealing of the uh, Whitten Wetlands bike path. They're not the only projects, money stretch the imagination. Um, migrant camp, there are other significant projects in the adopted strategies of council. So I put those there as examples of where money can be spent very quickly and very easily within the new financial year. Thank you, David. Councillor Farage. <coughs> Yeah, thank you, David, for that submission. Um, you speak against both these major projects at the Gallery and the Visitor Information Centre. Are you aware that the Visitor Information Centre was a, uh, <clears throat> a project that sat on a shovel-ready project, sat on the council plan for many, many years, and the gallery development that also sat on the council plan for many years, and there was a lot of community engagement in the last... 10 or so years about both those projects. Okay, I heard that uh, comment made. In fact, uh, you and I might have had that uh, discussion a few months ago, uh, Council, but uh, I don't see it in the existing, the art gallery, for example, I don't see in the existing art gallery strategy. And surely that's the document that guides the um, future use and development of the art gallery. And I'd suggest that uh, if it has been something that was significantly supported a decade ago, it probably just needs to be quickly tested again with the community against other potential uh, candidates for funding. I'll say the same thing about the information centre. I'll also say that uh, I'm not aware of anyone who is aware of that having sat on a council strategy or planning document uh, in years past. Now, maybe it's uh, a problem with communication. Maybe it was just unfortunately too well buried in those documents. I can't say, not having seen it. The fact of the matter is that it doesn't exist in the existing council plan, the current council plan. And to me, that document uh, is the fundamental document that should be guiding budget expenditure. Thank you, Councillor Farage. Councillor Farage, you have questions from Council? No. David, we appreciate your time this evening. And uh, we appreciate you submitting uh, your submission to the council. Thank you. Thank you very much for your hearing. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. So we now have and will invite Susan Campbell. Uh, Hello, uh, sorry, look, I'm just having a bit of trouble. Can I just wait one second? Sorry. No problem. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, we can hear you, Susan. Thank you. Um, just I apologise for that. I've had a few hiccups today. <laughs> I'd just like to uh, say good evening to councils and thank you for giving me the time to respond to the proposed budget. 
As set out in my submission, I found it difficult oh, to sorry. lose time. Can you hear? I can hear you. Just, just before you start, sorry, I just wanted to let you know that you'll have three minutes for your presentation. Right. Sorry. As set out in my submission, I found it difficult to decide for the 82 pages presented and request that a short, concise sym sym synopsis of the papers as presented would result in more communication, community feedback. I found it difficult to understand to understand exactly what the true spending plan is, that the amount of money delegated to each operation is not spelled out as to where it is actually to be spent. It is vague and non-informative to the reader. While climate change has been identified as the most important issue facing the next generation, there is no set fund allocated to mitigation of this problem. What legacy are we leaving? There have been many articles on the movement of peoples to country towns. In all those articles, it has been noted that people are moving from the towns to reside in a different environment. Unfortunately, there is no provision in the spending to achieve this. We will not attract new residents if we do not do better. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Susan. Um, I'll now, are you happy to take questions from councillors if they have any? Susan, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So, are you happy yes, to take any I can. But I can't see you at the moment. I don't know what's going on here. Are there any questions from council? No. <clears throat> uh, Councillor Gunnar, do you have a question for Susan? Oh, that's better. Thank you, Susan. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I think so. Okay. Uh, I have a question. And th firstly, thank you for the submission. And thank you for taking time to read that document, which you said it's hard to understand. Uh, we had a previous speaker as well, uh, objecting to the development proposed at the visitor center and the lakeside. And you also object in your Submission I can see and I can see that you're a landscape architect. You mentioned about the flood inundation on that area. Um, what do you reckon? What do you think is the best way forward uh, for a development like that or that area to develop? Well, I think for a start, we really need a development plan for the whole city of Benalla done by a registered planner with a landscape architect, of course, in, in part of the planning, and a whole um, redevelopment set up um, for Benalla and where we're going with new subdivisions. They're the particular worry that I have, that the subdivisions are not thought out properly. There's no landscaping plan, the tree planting in Benalla, which I originally thought when they bypassed Benalla, what a very good design they had. And I was very optimistic about how it would go on, but there hasn't been um, a comprehensive development plan done since then or landscaping. And we really do need more trees, more shade, and with climate change coming in, this is most important. And it seems to me that the council are not really um, concentrating on trying to make a beautiful green town which people from the city want to visit. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Are there any other questions from councillors? No? Susan, thank you for your time. We do appreciate your submission and um, you being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, good evening, all. I'd like to welcome and, and thank you for, uh, for Skyping in. Yes, look, I, my apologies for the uh, delay. Um, yes, we, we get there eventually. No, I look, uh, just before thank you once again uh, for the opportunity to make a submission. Uh, Michael, sorry, yes. just, just before you begin, um, I'll just let you know that uh, you have three minutes for your presentation. Thank you very much. I'd probably like to just follow on from what Susan Campbell has spoken about on sustainable land subdivisions within uh, the rural city. I sort of understand that a developer undertaking submissions uh, must pay levies to Benalla Rural City Council. So I ask the council, have they uh, a development contribution plan for reporting such levies? And if so, where is it listed in the budget papers? Um, the, the other matter is also the, uh, the gliding uh, club. I note that there are uh, gliders parked in their trailers on what I thought was the proposed aero park site, the relocation site, but are they charged a fee? And uh, if they are also, where is that uh, located within the, the budget papers? That was my main, uh, main concern. Do you have my submission on other matters? Thank you, Michael. Um, Michael, are you happy to take any questions from Council? Yes, I am. Thank you. Are there any questions, Councillor Firth? Yeah, <clears throat> thanks for your submission, Michael. Um, this year is uh, it's almost heartwarming to have as many submissions from the public as we have this year. I've sat on Council many years and there are some that we get none. So I'm very happy to see the, the number and the quality that has been given to us this year. <laughs> But to the point is, uh, have you, Michael, ever asked uh, directly about the uh, the uh, glider trailers that are parked at the back of the Aero Park? Uh, have you ever asked the council members or uh, staff exactly whether or not there is uh, a charge for those those glider trailers? Not, not at this stage, uh, Councillor Firth. No. Uh, just so you know, I have, um, and uh, you'll, you'll uh, find out the same thing that I was told. No, they don't get charged there. So uh, if, I'm glad you put it to the uh, to the budget point of view. Um, with regards to the uh, the new area park where that's supposed to go, um, would you be happy to? Uh, see whether or not uh, there is a timeline for us to do that? Well, my understanding, Councillor Firth, that there, there was um, a timeline and uh, it, it possibly expiring in 12 or 18 months' time, but uh, I, I stand to be corrected on that. Thanks for that, Michael. No more questions. Uh, we have a question from Councillor Gunnarattan. <clears throat> Thank you, Michael, for your submission and I appreciate the time you took uh, to do the submission and to speak to that. Uh, <clears throat> my question is about uh, the, the suggestion you make about community engagement. I ask this question because you're, uh, you're also a member of the community uh, plan implementation steering committee. You were also a member of the initial plan formation and the community engagement part of it. So you suggested us to go for a condensed version and a readable version, and there were two speakers who said the same thing, and there were some other submissions saying the same thing. Um, what would you think, with looking at the timelines we have, would there be any better way, or uh, what would you suggest if we do look at that at this point in time? Uh, so, sorry. Uh... Uh, Puna, I'm just, I missed part of that, uh, the ending of that question. Is uh, that in relation to um, the one page uh, document? Yes, you, you suggested that, but looking at the timelines and the deadline is 30th June to meet the budget uh, adoption. With that, uh, what would you suggest us to uh, do with the condensed version or a better engagement? Look, it, it, uh, it's now the 2nd of June. That doesn't give us a lot of time. And uh, at the meeting we're at today, we, we discovered that not a lot of people uh, are reading the paper as we thought. Social media seems to be the, the way to go for younger ones. Um, 
it's probably something for the future, a uh, one-page graphic uh, depiction of cost um, might be better uh, absorbed by the community at large, but uh, I think we'd probably, um, yeah, we may have missed the, uh, missed the opportunity for this, uh, this cycle. Thank you, Michael. Any other questions from councillors? No, Michael, we do appreciate your time this evening and thank you for putting your submission to the council. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. We will now welcome Jane Rushworth. Good evening, Jane. Good evening. You can hear and see me, can you? Uh, we can hear you, but we cannot see you. Good. I'm, oh, okay. Radio, that should have fixed that. And the other thing I'm going to do is put you directly in front of me. You're on the other screen. Sorry. Okay. Can you yes. are we right now? Yeah, we can hear and see you, Jane. Um, you have three minutes, so uh, the floor's yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for this opportunity. Look, it's timely to be having this conversation with you considering recent changes to the Victorian government legislation around community engagement and consultation. Um, the 21-22 budget, accessing a copy of the budget and providing feedback was beyond the capacity and the stamina of most Benalla residents. The Budget, Community Engagement and Consultation Plan seems not to have taken this into account. I understand you have taken part in a rigorous budget development process over many months, and I thank you for that. As well as drawing from your own skills, you have had access to expert staff to guide you through the process. And yet, I predict there are areas of the budget some of you have not yet fully grasped. Which yeah. our diverse community characteristics and socioeconomic status are well known. We are continually working to build on our strengths and to redress the spectrum of inequities that come with that SES. And I wonder how many in our community have had um, have been through a similar budget orientation process that you've been able to benefit from. And that brings me to a kind of frustration, well, an actual frustration. Why did anyone think that this budget could be digested by a representative number of our community and that the council would receive a useful community response rate? How serious are we when we ask for community feedback using such a blunt budget consultation plan? And what process approved the budget consultation plan? It's not enough to say our Benalla people had the opportunity, but they gave little feedback. Not when we know the profile of our community. It's not the fault of our community. It is a flaw in interpretation and planning processes. And I will rest on this matter when the following three measurables are in place. The first one is engaging and evidence-based community consultation plans designed and implemented by all Benalla Rural City Council departments. The second one is the community feedback response rate has risen to the statistically useful 10 to 15%. And the third and last one is position descriptions for all jobs in Benalla Rural City Council will include demonstrable experience in community consultation. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Are you happy to take questions from council? I am. I am. Are there any questions? I have to say, I cannot see you. No. I can only see myself, which is a bit of a... Oh, wonderful. Thank you. That's much more pleasant. Councillor Gunnarelli. 
Oh, no, sorry. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, thanks, Jane, for um, putting your submission in and taking time to make so much comment. That's great. I'm just wondering, um, the, in the um, item number two, the proposed 2021-22 uh, budget, um, your third dot point um, recommendation, that budget um, information sessions be held across the rural city. It's, I think that's a great idea, but I'm just wondering how you think that could be implemented to engage those groups of people that you were talking about. What, what would, do you have any ideas about how we could possibly do that in the future? Um, I have many, but right in the house, um, we only have to look at the community engagement and consultation plan related to the council um, plan. Um, that's a fine example of a community engagement and consultation plan uh, that is expansive, creative, and designed to engage as many people as possible. Um, it's not foolproof by any, much, um, by any means, um, but it is um, up there with uh, a reasonable community engagement plan. So uh, rather than me offer an invent the wheel um, you know, option, there's already in-house um, talent to look at and dare I say, even replicate. Yeah, just a follow-up question, Jane. So you're saying really at the moment you're feeling that council is doing an okay job with that community engagement for our future planning and uh, vision and everything for the community, but we just need to up our game on the budget, explanation to the community about the budget. Is that what you're saying? Um, somewhat. Um, it's pretty close. Um, what, I'm, what I'm actually saying is that um, in t as an example of a community engagement plan um, that I consider to be a valid plan, um, the work that's being done by the community development team uh, to engage the community in, in uh, giving their feedback in the, uh, the council plan, sorry, I muddled up the language there, which so frequently happens, uh, to give their feedback on the council plan, um, it's my view that that is a quite substantial community engagement plan that could be replicated across all departments. And, uh, and as all departments get confident about this process, then they will become uh, more nuanced and creative. Thanks, Jane. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> thanks, Jen, uh, for taking time to do a submission and also taking time to uh, speak today. And I understand you're also a member of the Community Plan Implementation Steering Committee. Mm. And at the start, you said that uh, you agree with uh, some other submissions made by Michael Hederman, David Blue, Sabine. Mm. Mike and Susan Kendall, um, there were some suggestions to suspend our major capital projects, uh, which are on the budget. Uh, does that mean you're on the same page with that? Um, I am um, on the, uh, in terms of the overall view, um, having listened to your discussion with David earlier, I think one of the um, difficulties in community is to understand the source of funding and the requirements that come with that. Um, if you're funded to do a particular job and it's state or federal funding, um, you probably don't have any negotiable options to spend that money elsewhere. And I think that that's something that the community um, doesn't and honestly doesn't need to understand until they have a strong opinion about, in inverted commas, a waste of funds. Um, so I, I um, agree with the sentiments um, expressed by my colleagues, um, but I have, you know, thought tonight, well, there's an opportunity for some further community development about the source of funds and uh, how much leeway there is to spend some funds in any other way at all, but what they've been allocated for. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Thank you very much for your time, Jane. We do appreciate your submission and time this evening. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Cheers. Thank you. Okay, so we're now.
that's the uh, end of the speakers. So I would be to propose 2021, 2022 budget submissions, and I'll hand it over to Kathy. So we received budget submissions uh, and further submissions. Mm -hmm. I've got the draft budget out. <laughs> Um, thanks, through the chair. Um, Kathy, I'm just curious is this a doable thing? This two page abbreviation yes. that they're talking about? Because um, I know how hard it is for us to get our heads around it. Um, I think it would be a great idea, and I actually also um, would like um, it put in a bit plainer words about our cap capital works. Um, even though I didn't ask any questions of our speakers on, on the capital works, I find that it would be hard for them to comprehend that this money is for this job only. And if we do not do these, these capital works that we've been granted the money for, we won't get the money and we have to give it back. So I think that that needs to be black and white if possible. Yeah. Mr Chair, just through you in regard to the process, tonight was only the year submission, so all these matters are covered when we consider the actual budget itself. So we don't provide answers tonight. We hear what the community has to say. Bring a report back to Council on what they've actually raised. So. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> keeping what you said, uh, Robert, can I ask a question from one of the submissions? Because it's mentioned at David Blow's uh, submission about the rates, uh, CIV, as a, mentioned as an increase, but think, uh, increase, but it looks like a de decline, uh, looking at that pitch. The 8.15 figure is the right figure. It's just positive or negative in the wrong way. Ah, yes, that's um, right. And it's in the, the actually, the 
there seems to be confusion about our council plan and what's in it with regards to capital exit flow. The redevelopment of the visitor information plan, I know, it was on the last council plan. It, it was clearly written. And I mean, the question is, isn't that automatically taken over? And I'm just confused at what David Bloor is saying that there's no, it's just, it dumbfounds me. It, it, can anybody explain how he can not find that we always intended to do the visitor information or was one of the projects? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Street Chair. Um, I'll take it as a bit of a statement, to be honest, the council. Uh, from me or Dave? Uh, from, from all the speakers, I do value their input. Uh, and it's one of those processes where if you look into the council plans and you, you know where to look, you can find just about anything. The, the, the direct line sometimes is a bit blurred. And we are in a fortunate position where we have intimate knowledge about pretty much the entire budget. So I do take on board their comments from uh, community members where they can't draw that direct line from here to the budget. And we need to be mindful of that. I know there's been a lot of consultation around both projects, big ones, through the art gallery community in particular, and through the feasibility study, there was a tremendous amount of consultation on, on that particular project. The VIC, I personally sat in many, many meetings and consultation, and a lot of other projects as well. But I set that aside. There's some genuine uh, concerns and issues raised there, and I think as officers and as a council, we need to, to take that on board. And if we need to uh, clarify our documentation and our message, I think we need to do that. Um, so I'm really happy with the feedback that has been received. I also need to balance it up with, you know, things that have communicated to the council outside of these processes as well. In a lot of the meetings that I sit in from not only community members that I sit on, but also conversations that we have all the time. So there's a bit of a balancing act. You know, the budget preparation and that considerations as well. So I'm really pleased with what has um, you know, taken place tonight. Yeah, just as a follow up to that same question, it's one of those things where maybe it's, or uh, do you think it would be a good idea if we had some con continuity or continuation in from one council plan to another council plan so that people can more easily follow it? Thank you. Through the chair, I'll, uh, I'll uh, take that as a statement also. <laughs> it would be wonderful that, and I think we quite often criticise other levels of government when we say that there's no long-term planning and we have to sort of plan for you know, a particular three or four year period. Uh, many projects may last, you know, you know, for many iterations of the council plan. Uh, sometimes they might drop out here, but they'll reappear somewhere over here does it mean we dismiss it in its entirety for this little period of time when we know it existed back over here and we plan to bring it back over oh. here so it's an interesting discussion i think that we have internally all the time i know we have that with the council and the community but from a community member's perspective not understanding that process i said well it doesn't exist today you shouldn't be doing it just we need to balance that up because it was there we've done a lot of work to be able to activate it, to be able to bring it back to the community. And once again, it's a bit of a balancing act, but you know, valid points. Yes, Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> okay, now, Kathy, my question is from uh, Michael Hederman's submission. On the first page on employee costs, he mentioned that the, there's a staff reduction 21, but the budget was an increase of 447,000. Did you have a chance to look at that? Or I couldn't really uh, find that. So the challenge is that um, is we have the working Victoria numbers currently for us. At the end of next year, the working for Victoria 21 positions won't be part of our um, data. So the, the public associated with their um, short-term employment are included and then we also have that new um, 
service issues and so those numbers drop off. So the impact of that is that the salaries um, for the 21 staff we have to pay for the child money outflowing, but the ongoing employee costs will reduce because we won't have the numbers continuing staff members on the phone. So to just look at one figure is very hard. And you also have to recognize the increase in superannuation and pay function and increase of the so when you roll those things through, it is to the SRT and it's across the board. And that's why in section three, which you need to hear that I quote the section three point one, um, that's where we are going. The physical numbers, the dollars spent, the breakout down the female. It's a very complicated file. Um, it's only when you come to the tenure plan and our plan. So, you know, now 10 years of that sort of data to be preparing for the new take up the need to understand that my product is just a bit of a for the next one as well. Um, Councillors, um... Well, a lot of the uh, council down what I'll just comment on is that a lot of information has been provided tonight in these submissions. Council will work through the uh, process so we can come back to the table in the next week or two through the budget process and interrogate our CEO and other staff a little bit more in regards to what, what the community is. So, did you want to hold off on your questions until we get to that process? Is it in relation? It is just a little quick question that you might be able to discuss and then come back. Yeah. Uh, something we can do at the council next council meeting. I'm happy to wait if, <coughs> if there's an opportunity to go through this nine. Then. Yeah. So, so there are questions made, there were asked as well. In yeah. Sorry, so. Councillor Gunner, I apologize you may mention that tonight was to listen to our speakers and yeah. talk through That's their fine. submissions Thanks, and then just acknowledge that it's been noted tonight. And then through the budget process, in the next few weeks, we'll come back to these. and. So, councillors, there's a recommendation on page eight. If I could have someone move that recommendation, Councillor Hur and Councillor Hur. Who wish to speak, Councillor Hur? No, thank you. Councillor Hur? No, thank you. Any other councillor wish to speak, Councillor Hur? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I would like to thank all the community members who made submissions and the staff to go through that and compile them and present today and giving them the opportunity, even with this current stage for lockdown, to come and speak with this, using the technology. Well, probably first time and uh, it's good to have that opportunity as you mentioned chair uh, in the next meeting uh, to go through this in detail and discuss uh, these submissions thank you any other council wish to speak i'll just make a comment following that um i, I agree that was great to have so many people in our community write in and, and be actively involved in this process um we will get to pull this apart a little bit more in the next couple of meeting cycles and um uh, consider this as we go forth and adopt our budget. Uh, all those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. And we'll close the meeting.